2020 has been a crazy year for everybody and crypto is not immune. We have seen Bitcoin go from 10,000 to 4,000 to 12,000 within a six month time frame. And with all that volatility, we have seen dozens of altcoins pass their all time highs. And in doing so, we have discovered new ways to crypto. We have seen projects like Yearn Finance and Uniswap create a new DeFi hype that has gained massive interest in 2020 and has made many millionaires without Bitcoin revisiting its all-time highs. The word DeFi is being thrown around more and more, and with good reason now that we have actual, working, truly decentralized products that give an enormous value in the crypto community. A lot of people are throwing around sentences like, this reminds me of 2016, or just past my 2017-2018 all-time highs, which are making more and more people more bullish on this DeFi movement. Some of those statements have merit because in 2017 and 2018 there were hordes of scams and massive amounts of money getting thrown into dying projects and exit scams became a norm in the crypto land. Now that we have new ways of making money in 2020, making more millionaires in the past couple of months than we have in the past couple of years combined in the crypto community, this has brought a lot of players trying to take advantage of the hype and this is where SushiSwap comes in. SushiSwap is a one-of-a-kind, unique story never seen in crypto land before, even though it seems so familiar. Is this a story of a scammer who did a copy and paste on Uniswap and exit scammed less than two weeks after the launch of a $1.2 billion scam project? Or is this a story of an anonymous developer who created a great project and deserves a $13 million payday for his contributions to the community? If this is something you would love to hear, then please do me a favor and do a little tappy tap on that like button because today we're gonna learn all about the sushi swap drama. SushiSwap started with the release of its Medium post on August 26, creating a fork of Uniswap with some differences, like allowing you the ability to provide some liquidity into a pool and earn some rewards in the form of Sushi tokens. However, unlike Uniswap, those Sushi tokens would also entitle you to continue to earn a portion of the protocol's fee accumulated in Sushi, even if you decide to no longer participate in the liquidity provision. This token was also a governance token as well, which would allow ownership over the project and would allow you to earn a portion of the fee's liquidity pools as well. Uniswap is built without a governance token. It is instead a venture-backed company. In Uniswap, liquidity providers are rewarded by sharing the 0.3% fee on all trades within the pools they have submitted liquidity to. So many people saw the value of Uniswap and everybody was already talking about tokenizing Uniswap that many of these projects already started popping up on a daily basis. SushiSwap was the first widely adopted among these type of projects. This got people so excited that they locked up over $800 million in tokens within the first few days of the project launching. Barely after a week, SushiSwap had over $1.2 billion locked up in funds. This is when the sushi hit the fan. In two withdrawals, the anonymous sushi creator, Nomi Chef, sold a total of 37,401 Ethereum, which was valued around $12 million at the time of the transaction. After Nomi cashed out, this was his reply. I did the recent move because I care about the community. I'm taking ill for you, but all I received was blaming and fudding. Here's what happened. The dev share part of me, I converted them to Ethereum. I stopped caring about price and I will focus on the technicality of the migration. People asked if I exit scammed. I did not. I'm still here. I will continue to participate in the discussion. I will help with the technical part. I will help to ensure a successful migration. At Satoshi Light did the same and Litecoin had no problem surviving. Maybe you don't think I deserve the Ethereum. I think my contributions justified that. I wrote through my migration code, I did all the audits, I coordinated the largest LP pools ever, 
I created a large community. I sprung up hundreds of LP scam projects all in one week. And that is what I do. I created idea. I created community. I did it best when I don't have price under pressure. And if you believe the community, you believe the idea. You stay. If not, you are free to leave. It is an open experiment, no strings attached. And then he goes on talking about a multi-sig contract that ended up not happening. And then he ends it saying, all I can say is if the experiment goes on to success, you guys know the upside. But if people don't believe in the project, it will fail and will return everything back to the original creator, Uniswap Protocol. I am happy with either result. So many people didn't trust Chef Nomi after this happened, and on Discord, a random user recommended that Sam take the project over. This was very strange because Sam didn't get involved in the project until about a couple days prior by listing it on his FTX exchange. Sam was taking a nap and wakes up to see that Chef Nomi was asking for his keys. Um, and I actually kind of went to go take a nap because it had been a really long, exhausting while. Um, and, and I was napping and someone like shouted like, Hey Sam, someone tweeted something about Nomi something giving the keys something. So, so I got up and looked on Twitter and lo and behold, Nomi had sort of offered to give me the keys. To, to the, it kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, it was... Uh, I was pretty shocked. Uh Sam ended up posting his keys on Twitter and to his surprise, the project is now under his control. A lot of people thought users like 0x Mackie would have taken full control, but Mackie didn't want to take full control because he was nervous about getting the integration done properly in the following days, so somehow it landed on Sam's lap. My role here isn't to kind of permanently decide what's going to happen with the, the coin. That's not the whole purpose of it is that it's decentralized. There's there's still some fine lines here, and I think that we're seeing some of these play out. Right now, sort of in real time, How what should the process be for deciding who the multi-sig mm -hmm. people are? It's not obvious what the answer is there. Now, obviously, this whole situation caused people to try and hunt down the person behind the curtains, pulling the levers on Sushi Swap. <laughs> the internet quickly started pointing the finger at the band CTO and co-founder Sorowit going under the user name on Twitter at no more bear. The internet cited that the band hosted their website on the same IP as SushiSwap, which comes to find out that is a hosting site for hundreds of completely different websites hosted by different people under the same IP address. Since then, band has moved their hosting website. People found the connection with the game World of Warcraft, which both Sorwit played and Chef Nomi played, and Chef Nomi used one of the characters as Chef Nomi's avatar. Although the image floating around shows a filtered liked section with the keyword Hearthstone and ignored the fact that Sorwit had 90 other repositories and left out that contact. Hey, and maybe since the game had 100 million people play it, maybe that's not the best connection either. The other connection that people bring up is the fact that Band did an audit early on for Sushi Swap and promoted their project, which does happen all the time in the community, so you tell me. Both the Band Twitter account and Sorowit made a statement denying the claims that Chef Nomi and the Band CTO Sorowit were the same person. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Do you think that they're the same person? Do you think not? Do you think the internet's going overboard? You tell me in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. The integration happens to be taking place this very second, and so far as of recording this, everything is going smoothly. We will see what happens over the following days, weeks, and months, but you can be sure that I will be following this closely and update you on everything major that goes down, so make sure that you hit that bell notification if you haven't already so you don't miss out. I personally am truly shocked and impressed at this whole story, and I truly hope that Sushi does well and becomes a big player in the industry. I think the tornado of a disaster that has taken place over the past few days can turn into a Cinderella story if the community has that desire. I believe this is a story of why centralization is a problem and how DeFi can be the solution if done correctly. 
I believe that this industry has so many problems and causes so many fires that sometimes can't be put out. But with some of these fires can spring up better, stronger, and more beneficial products and projects for the crypto community and beyond. When people think they missed the boat on Bitcoin and crypto, I think of stories like this, and it is a starch reminder that we are all still in the wild west and we have a long ways to go before this community has reached its full potential. We are in the beginning days of something so special that there will be problems like this and there will be a bumpy road ahead of us, but hopefully we'll see each other on the other side in one piece and hopefully with Lambos. And that is it. I super appreciate everyone who has made it this far. And hey, if you've made it this far, please go down and hit a little like button on the video. That really does help me out. And if this content is your jam, please go down and subscribe. I do make these videos all the time throughout the week. And I do live streams every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time. Um, answer questions, kind of shoot the ball, go over the weekly, my weekly thoughts, projects, all sorts of stuff. Uh, my channel is directed towards newer people in the space, so um, helping onboard brand new people. So if that is you, my channel, my content is kind of directed to, towards newer people. Um, and then also, every single penny that YouTube gives me goes straight to charity. So every single like and subscribe absolutely goes a very, very long ways. And I super appreciate everybody who has liked and subscribed. I, I'm about to hit 2,000 subscribers today, and wow, that is just amazing. Thank you, everybody who has subbed. And uh, at any rate, um, I will see you guys at the next video. Take care. Bye. I can say that I think it's an awesome idea. And I think it's a cool project. And I think it had a lot of momentum. I think it also obviously dealt itself a pretty big blow. And, you know, I think that it's sort of the, the technolo technologically, it's sort of like on a path to recover from that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not sort of fatally wounded in a sort of like strict sense. Um, and I think that it still has a lot of promise. And I think, you know, in the migrations happening in a couple of days, we'll see what happens, but a lot of funds might migrate. Um, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't, I can't tell the future, but I think it still has pretty high upside if people are willing to, to, to move forward with it.